This is an Icon Ministry production with the support of our ministry partners and donors. On behalf of Icon Ministry, I'd love to welcome you to the celebration of the Eucharist. During this Mass, we're going to explore the resurrection. We're going to pray the resurrection, live the resurrection, but also try to understand the impact it's going to have over our life, over our eternity. We live in the resurrection and we want to proclaim the resurrection to the world. And this is why, as Icon Ministry, we reach out to millions of people across the world, trying to tell them about the risen Christ. One of the ways we have done this recently is through le- releasing a game called Meta Saint. If you'd like to know more about this game and would like to pray for us and partner with us to reach millions of people, of young people, please go to metasaint.com. If you'd like to donate and support this ministry and the many, many, many projects that we do, please also go to iconministry.com forward slash support. We're grateful for you. I'm going to be praying for you. Also, please pray for us during this Mass. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we celebrate this Holy Eucharist on the third Sunday of Easter, let's ask the Lord to help us live in the resurrection, in the excitement of serving the Lord. There is nothing more peaceful, nothing more joyful, nothing more fulfilling than belonging to the risen Christ. And so as we begin this time of prayer, let us ask for God's mercy, for God's grace. Lord, for those times we lost sight of what it means to belong to you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold, when he said through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer. Now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you release me, have mercy and hear me. Lord, Lord let, let your, your face, face shine, on, shine us. on us. It is the Lord who grants favours to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Lord, Lord let, let your, your face, face shine, shine on us. What can bring us happiness, many say. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lord, Lord let, let your, your face, face shine, on, shine us. on us. I will lie down in peace, and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lord, Lord let, your, let face your face shine, shine on, on us. us. A reading from the first letter of St John. I am writing this, my children, to stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, you have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is the sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord Jesus, make your word plain to us. Make our hearts burn with love when you speak. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, 
Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead and on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem and you are witness of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Why does the resurrection make a difference? Why does Jesus rising from the dead make a difference? One, because we know because of the resurrection that we're not talking to a dead God, right? We're not talking to a, a man in history, but we're talking to a God because he's risen from the dead who is alive. He's just as alive today as he was 2000 years ago. He's just as intact in body, even mind and soul as he was 2000 years ago because his body is risen from the dead. Now, the Bible says that Jesus is the first fruit. That means that all the other fruit that follow will follow in the same way. If the first fruit is good, usually the rest of the fruit on that tree resemble the first fruit. Now, this is an example for us, that we are the fruit on that same tree and that means that we are going to go through the same thing that Jesus has gone through. That we will go through, if we remain faithful to him, through the resurrection. And what does it mean to go through the resurrection? It means that we, our bodies, this physical body, will be resurrected. Now, some theologians say that when we rise from the dead, we will all go to a certain age, the age of 30 or 33. That's the age that Jesus rose from the dead. For some, they get older. For some, they become younger. But they come to this age of 33 traditionally because Jesus was risen from the dead. But that's not as material and as necessary as what I'm about to say. The other things that are going to happen to our bodies when we rise from the dead. So our bodies will on the last day rise from the dead physically, just like Jesus did. And there are a few things we know about the resurrected body that we know from Jesus, the first fruit. The first thing is that people won't necessarily recognize us immediately. Why? Because we'll be more symmetrical, we'll be more perfect, we'll be more beautiful, maybe. Jesus wasn't recognized in the garden when Mary Magdalene saw him. Jesus wasn't recognized on the road to Emmaus. Jesus wasn't recognized even in today's gospel. But eventually they did recognize him. So we know that we won't necessarily be quickly recognizable. The second thing that we know is that we'll be able to walk through walls. How awesome is that? We know that Jesus walked through walls. He appeared in the upper room when all the doors were locked. So he was able to get inside even though he had a physical body. Another thing we know about the risen Christ is that we're able to go from one place to another pretty quickly because he was in Emmaus and he appeared to so many hundreds of people pretty much at the same time. And so there'll be this capacity maybe to bilocate or maybe to get from one place to another. This is, this is from the scripture, mind you. Another thing is that we retain our wounds. We retain the wounds that give glory to God. Jesus retained his wounds and he showed his wounds to, to the apostles. And they saw and they recognized him very often through the breaking of bread, but also through his wounds. Then another thing about the risen body is that we'll be able to eat and a lot of fish for that. <laughs> Jesus, every time the risen Christ ate something, he ate fish. So this is a sign to us that fish must be somehow heavenly food, he healthy food. And God wants us to eat this fish. And so physical food we can eat. And that gives us hope because when we go to heaven and there's the eternal banquet, we will be physically eating in heaven. This is something that we can get excited for. You see, the resurrection is not just a myth. It's not just something ghostly, but it is something real. And it is something that we can all be excited for because Jesus, the first fruit, has risen from the dead.
So let us now proclaim our faith in Christ, who is risen from the dead. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And so now we bring our prayers to the Lord. What do you want to pray for? What do you need? And Lord, we bring our prayers to you. We bring our joy to you. We bring our hope to you, but also our fear, the fear of death, the fear of not rising from the dead, but also teach us to be comforted and know that you are going to, as the first fruit, lead us to heaven. Lord, hear us. We pray for your church and for the world that this church may live a resurrected life, a life for heaven and not for earth. Lord, hear us. Now in the silence of your own hearts, just bring your prayers to the Lord. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you for showing your mercy to us, for granting us our prayers and our needs. And we ask this and all of our needs for the intercession of Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who become our spiritual drink. pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause of such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. 
And he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world and therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Shane, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. to pray for you, for your heart, that you might live a life in the resurrection, knowing that you have nothing to be afraid of. And so, Lord God, I just ask that you send your spirit upon every person who's praying right now. As they bow their head, Lord, I pray for your Holy Spirit to be upon them, your blessing in their life. I bind in the name of Jesus any spirit of fear, anything that is stopping them from living in the joy of eternity. Lord, I speak peace. I speak peace over them, their families. Lord, I'd like to pray for someone who's praying to have children. Lord, Give them this grace that only you can give. Lord, I pray for someone who's praying for, for a, a parent who's in hospital dying at this moment. Lord, I pray for, this, for these people. Lord, I just pray for your Holy Spirit to be upon them. Come, Holy Spirit, with your peace, with your presence. And Lord, with a gift, a deep gift of trust in you. Let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. On behalf of Icon Ministry, thank you once again for joining us for this time of prayer. We need your prayer because we're continuing to grow as a ministry. Once the pandemic was over, we thought that was it. <laughs> we, the ministry was going to shrink again, but it just keeps growing and growing. Our opportunities to reach to more people grows every single day. And we're bringing people, by the grace of God, we're bringing people into the kingdom of heaven. And this is because of you and your support. If you're able to help us continue this ministry, to grow this ministry, to reach to souls so that they may too come to heaven, please go to iconministry.com forward slash support. Every dollar makes a difference. Every dollar impacts lives and hearts and allows us to continue this ministry. 
So let us pray. Also, check out our podcast, catholicinfluencerspodcast.com, and, and that way you can prepare for the upcoming gospel readings as well. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who were pleased to you were pleased to renew by the mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Ministry wants to reach out to the Alpha Generation. Introducing MetaSaint, a revolutionary project where the hope and love of Christ meet the Metaverse generation. Did you know that the Roblox platform transcends mere gaming? It's a bustling digital universe with over 70 million users a day. This is an incredible opportunity to share the gospel with young people. Do your children or grandchildren play Roblox? Tell them to start playing MetaSaint, where they will have an interactive experience of the gospel like never before. As we pioneer this exciting new frontier of connection and community, we invite you to help us in this groundbreaking mission, our biggest project yet, to ensure the digital spaces can become a place where all can encounter the transformative power of Christ. Together, let's bring the gospel to the metaverse. Visit metasaint.com to learn more.